News 15 at 9 begins with breaking news. We well, are looking live at conditions right now in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. Hurricane Milton coming to shore a short time ago, about 40 miles south of Tampa. As we come on air tonight, Hurricane Milton uh, making landfall as a Category 3 storm with sustained winds of 120 miles an hour and even higher gusts. Hundreds of thousands are without power tonight with millions under flash flood warnings. We have team coverage tonight of Hurricane Milton. Storm Track 15 meteorologist Michael Crowley will explain why Milton is one of the strongest hurricanes ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. News 15's Rebecca Castor is in Tampa, Florida, near where Milton went ashore. But first, we want to get right to Storm Track 15 Chief Meteorologist Dan Romano. He's tracking the very latest on Milton's movements at this hour. What do you have, Dan? Yeah, now that the center of the storm is over land, it continues to weekend even more so. Now downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane, it's about 30 or 20 miles to the northeast of Sarasota, Florida, and about 90 miles to the southwest of Orlando. That's the major next major metropolitan area that will be under the gun uh, right now maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour let's take a closer look at this storm as it moved ashore siesta key which is just to the south of tampa bay this waterway right here is tampa bay and i'll show a closer look at it but you can see how the eye itself not nearly uh, holding as much integrity as it did earlier especially when it was at category five storm but these backside winds are really whipping uh, through Sarasota at the moment. I've seen gusts of about 100 to 110 miles per hour. So here is Sarasota, and then this is Siesta Key, the land, one of the barrier islands that basically acts as a buffer between the Gulf of Mexico and Sarasota. This is Tampa Bay, Tampa, Florida, St. Petersburg, as well as Clearwater and Clearwater Beach. But again, we're looking at the clockwise, counterclockwise flow around it, and we are seeing extremely strong winds impacting Tampa Bay as we speak. Speak. And a quick look at Futurecast now brings the eye of the storm closer towards Orlando around midnight, 1 o'clock their time. We'll talk more about that, what that means for us coming back here in a bit. I'll send it to you, Jeff. Thank you, Dan. We continue our team coverage of the hurricane tonight with News 15's Rebecca Castor. She joins us tonight from Tampa with a look at conditions there after Milton roared ashore just a short time ago. A long night here in Florida as Milton makes landfall and crosses the state. It's being called the storm of the century. Hurricane Milton slamming Florida's west coast with torrential rain and dangerous winds. Streets are beginning to flood and hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses are without power. Making matters worse, tornadoes are spawning across the state. Stay inside and stay off the roads. Flood waters and rushing storm surge are very dangerous. More than 8,000 federal personnel are on the ground in the southeast ready to assist with emergency response and recovery. 20 million meals and 40 million liters of water are also at the ready. Anna and the entire federal family will be there to provide those immediate life-saving activities and begin to stabilize the incident after the storm passes. Despite mandatory evacuation orders in areas, some are choosing to stay behind. Probably be a few days without power mm -hmm. and they'll turn it back on. I don't recommend this to anybody, <laughs> not a soul. But we're going to be fine. It was in the best interest for my wife and children to leave and for me to remain to ensure the house is OK, ensure our business is OK and uh, protect our property. But most people listen to the warnings. We can stand the wind and we can stand hurricanes, but the flooding, no, we're not taking a chance on that. Search and rescue teams, helicopters and high water vehicles are ready to deploy if needed. In Tampa, Florida, Rebecca Castor for News 15.